Gina AI has launched world's first 8K open source text embedding model. This new model rivals text embedding ADA002 in terms of performance. You can use this model in many ways. One of them is Llama Index. Let me give you a brief overview of this new model. So if you look at the specification of this model, this model has been released by the Berlin-based artificial intelligence company, Gina AI. And this model is one of the first model in the world with this 8K tokens. This cutting edge model is now the only open source offering that supports an impressive 8192K tokens context length, putting it on par with OpenAI's proprietary models such as text embedding ADA, as I mentioned earlier. Now, if you look at the benchmarks given on their website, you would see that it already outperforms a lot of other models. That and there are a lot of features to this model. So let me show you the benchmark first. So this is the benchmark I'm talking about, as you can see on your screen. Now, this Gina embedding V2 model was built from the ground up. And over the last three months, the team at Gina AI engaged in intensive R&D data collection and tuning. The outcome is a model that marks a significant leap from its predecessors. And this is not just a, a technical feat or anything like that. Rather, it is a complete package. Because in this one, its 8K context length opens door to new industry application. For example, this could be very handy when it comes to legal documents analysis. That could also be of great help if you are doing any embedded scientific paper research, for example, for advanced analytics and discovery. You can do the literary analysis with it where you want to delve deep into the long form content and you can capture nuanced thematic elements with the help of this uh, similarity search model. You can also do financial forecasting which would enable you to attain superior insights from detailed financial reports. Plus it is really good at conversational AI use cases because if you want to improve your intricate user queries in your chatbots, you can use this embedding models. Now, if you look at this graph, this is telling you that this uh, benchmarking in several data set has also outperformed leading based embedding models emphasizing the practical advantage of longer context capabilities. There are two flavors of this model. One is the base model and the other one is the small model. Let me show you how you can install this small model and try out a couple of embeddings. You can also find its model card at Hugging Face. And this is the Hugging Face site where you can play around with this model or if you want to do any embedding or if you want to check the model card or if you want to download the files from it. Okay, now let me show you how you can install it and run it locally or in the Google Colab. If you want to run it locally, you would need to have Linux or Windows installed and you would need Python installed in both of them. I'll be using Google Colab for this purpose and this is my Google Colab. The first thing we need to do is to install the Transformers library. Then from there, we need to import this uh, module and then I am giving it this model here, which is our Gina embedding B2 small model. And then rest is simply trust remote code, which means that we are downloading a trusted safer code. So let's run it. The model files are pretty um, small, so it shouldn't take too long. Let's wait for it to finish. It is first installing transformers library and then importing the modules from it. So you can see that the transformer is being installed now. And then afterwards, it is going to download the model here. And I just want to show you in real time because it shouldn't take too long for it to download. So bear with me. So you, transformers is installed. And there you go. It is now downloading the model from Hugging Face. That's cool. And you can see it's just 65 meg fairly fast and I'm using Google Colab. And 
I am simply using it on CPU, but you can use GPU with it if you want. Okay, model is downloaded. Now let's play around with a few of the embedding. So here you can see we are passing it two sentences. What is how is the weather today and what is the current weather like today? Both are fairly sim similar. So the output should be closer to one or in 90s because these are quite similar. So let me run it and see what is the embedding output. There you go, it is 93.99. So fairly similar sentences. Now let me give it a bit different one. Maybe I'll say this is totally irrelevant. Now I'll remove the question mark. It still is, is there, but let's run it, see. Uh, if it is, it should go down, then 93, let's see. There you go, it is only 65, 7 now. So these um, sentences are not similar. And then you can play around it with different words and how the embeddings are, are different or similar. So this is, as you can see, it is still lower. And if you move it to just like something very closer, it should give you more higher result as we saw earlier. And you can, as I mentioned, you can use it in a lot of applications out there. Um, and given the lightweight model and that larger context size, this could be handy in a lot of applications. I will drop the link to this model and also to this Gina AI, and you can read more. And if you want to know more about this Gina AI, I would highly suggest browsing through their website because there are a lot of stuff for everyone. For example, for power users, you have different options, like you can have your um, prompt perfect, which is a really good tool for prompt engineering. And then there is the scene explain, which is an AI solution for image captions and video summaries, a very, very powerful tool. And there are a lot of other tools. For developers, you can have um, a new data structure, Docker for multimodal data. And then you can also, if you want to build your own application within the cloud, you can use Gina's own offering. And then this one is really advanced where you can do some uh, fine tune embedding on domain specific data by using their fine tuner, a very good tool, I would say. There are a few options for enterprises. If you want to use it at the enterprise level, then they have different packages. And then there are a lot of other information in their documents. And uh, if you want, you can also join their community, which is quite good. So quite a happening company, I would say. And there are a lot of good things happening there. And then um, you can go in and read a lot of other news about them. I hope that you found it interesting. If you have any questions or comments, please, you know where to put them. And if you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much.